Bestbookbits.com presents Nuts and Bolts Spirituality, Waking Up the Sleepwalkers by Richard D. Blackstone. Nuts and Bolts Spirituality explores the two belief systems that we hold about life. Theory number one of the universe says that we are separate from each other, separate from God, and is fear-based. Theory number two of the universe says that we are one with all things, one with God, and is love-based. We observe that most people in the world subscribe to theory number one about the universe. To get a real clarity on the beliefs that we hold about life and our relationship with the source of life, God, nuts and bolts spirituality, explores the two questions that must be addressed and answered. First, why was the universe created in the first place? Secondly, what is our purpose in that creation? By examining these questions, we can understand life from a larger, clearer perspective. From this understanding, the reader can view their own life with more clarity and awareness. This larger, clearer perspective allows the sleepwalkers of the world to wake up, becoming aware, and truly create the life of their intentions and desires. The written summary can be found on our website, bestbookbits.com. So without further ado, I bring you the book summary of Nuts and Bolts Spirituality. The more consciously we live, the more we can focus on what we have been. The mind receives our state of beingness and signals the body to respond to this by some form of doingness. This is attained by an automatic doingness to reflect a state of beingness, or by a willingful doingness to reflect a state of beingness that is to be attained. The key is to go inside and establish the highest thought about yourself, then imagine the person you would be if you lived that thought every day. If that person is kind, then be kindness. If that person is wise, then be wisdom. If that person is a healer, then be healing. It's entirely up to you. Seek to determine who you wish to be and then think those thoughts every day. Preserve and be persistent in your thinking and the beingness creates doingness. Function will start to showing up and you will find yourself doing things that are in alignment with what you are being. Sometimes this is subtle stuff but one day you'll wake up and realize that you are acting differently. You will draw people and circumstances to you that align with your beingness. Actually, you do that now. But if you are living unconsciously, you are not aware of it. Give to another that which we desire. Most of the world is populated with people who are sleepwalking through their lives, while others actually engage in the process of life and live their passion. What is the difference between these people? It's a matter of awareness. The sleepwalkers of the world are unaware of who they really are. They are unaware of the powers they possess and have chosen to follow a path that relates to the events and experiences of life from a damage control point of view. They still create the events and experiences of their lives, but they are creating unconsciously and unaware that they bring forth into the reality exactly what they have created. Because they are unaware of their creations, they don't recognize them as their own and therefore take no responsibility for them. They view the events and experiences of their lives as something that is happening to them by people and circumstances completely unrelated to them. Because these things are happening to them, they can only react to the event based on their past experiences or worse yet, by doing what somebody else told them was the proper way to respond. Not only do they take no responsibility for their actions, creations, but they blame other people and events for what they do, why they do it, and how they do it. They view the world through the front of a television set and accept the mindless dribble it spews forth as the gospel. They give up their own decision-making powers and accept the words of others as their own truth. They believe that the best thing they can do is not rock the boat too much and be a good citizen who follows the rules. They know that they aren't going to get out of this world alive and their hope is that God will forgive them for their sins and send them to heaven when this is all over. You can only live in awareness if you live your life consciously. You can only live in awareness if you live your life consciously. And you can only live your life consciously if you come from a paradigm that says you have the power within you to create the life you intend. And you only have that power if you know that it, the power within comes from the source of all power. And you only know this if you and the source are connected. You cannot be separate from the source of your authentic power and believe that you possess the same powers. If you are one with the source, your base thought is that the source created it all and you are the one with the source so you created it all. You are created in the image and likeness of the source, so you possess the power to create here on earth, just as the source created you. 
Your mission is not to react to your life, but to create your life as you determine it to be. You have the same knowledge as the source, but you have agreed to forget all you know in order to create experiences that allow the source to know experientially through you all that the source knows conceptually. The key is awareness, and awareness comes from understanding who you really are and what's inside of you. You can't do it by searching the world that is exterior to you. Only from within can you draw the power of the source. That is authentic power. True awareness allows you to tap into knowledge to create what you desire. You can then create in full awareness because the authentic power within you wants you to be responsible for your creations. The aware person doesn't judge people, events and circumstances that show up in their lives. The aware person acknowledges that each was sent as a gift in order for you to evolve into your determination of who you choose to be. In doing so, you realize your creation. This acceptance of what shows up in your life is key to being aware of the perfection of the process from a whole new perspective. From this perspective, you see the whole picture. You are aware of who you really are and are able to step out of the day-to-day physical world and view your life journey from a more detached perspective. When you are deeply involved in the day-to-day living, you can't see the forest through the trees. This stepping back from your life allows you to see the forest. You become aware of the larger nuances and subtleties that are necessary and right for your career. As you go back into the forest from your day-to-day life, you carry this awareness with you and no longer judge the circumstances that you encounter. When you used to judge, you now accept because you are that it's all part of the big picture. You see the perfection in the process. You are no longer attached to your experiences because you are that whatever form your creation shows up in the right and perfect form for you to evolve. You become aware of that form that shows up to expose you to the new and different ideas and the things that you haven't thought of before. This awareness of new thought begins the threads of a new creation. Remember, everything starts with a thought. Everything starts with a thought. In this stage of awareness, you realize that everything that is happening is happening right now. You begin to focus on the present moment. You develop present moment awareness. You understand your past experiences have formed your memory, but now your concern is to be aware of what is going on right now. This allows you to create your next best thought to manifest for your evolvement. When you live with unconditional love, you accept and rejoice in all your creations. You don't judge and see if they serve you or not. If they do not serve you, then you choose another thought and create that. The key here is to love yourself unconditionally. When you can stop judging yourself and accept who you are as the magnificent and perfect manifestation of one of God's spirit children, then you are on your way to acceptance of all the things that you create. We all need to start with ourselves. Unconditional love, like the spirit, resides within us. It is our core. Conditioned love, like the body, is external and reacts to external stimuli. Unconditional love, like the soul, is internal. It doesn't have to react to external stimuli. Unconditional love just is, and you can tap into it anytime you like in any exterior expression of yourself that you choose. It is always there when you want it. It is part of your source. All you need to do is tap into your source. And that's a wrap on Nuts and Bolts Spirituality. Subscribe to our channel and take a look at the hundreds of book summaries uploaded previously. To find hundreds of written summaries, check out our website, bestbookbits.com. And for hundreds of audio podcast summaries, find us on mixcloud.com forward slash bestbookbits. If you like reading and want to get involved in sharing knowledge and spreading great book summaries, connect with myself by emailing info at bestbookbits.com to join us. Thanks for watching and listening and have yourself an amazing day. Take care.